And of course, stay tuned till the end of the program because that is when we will bring you the result. Now though, John Galliano is the man in the dock. He blames drink, drugs and stress for his anti-Semitic outburst. The outrageous fashion designer isn't the first drunken celebrity accused of anti-Jewish ranting, but he's the only one to be prosecuted. Do offensive words cause real damage? Or, however appalling the insult, is free speech at stake here? Should religious insults land you in court? A warning, as you might expect, this video contains offensive comments and flash photography. Renowned British fashion designer John Galliano was hauled before a French court this week. His crime? An alleged drunken, anti-Semitic and racist rant in his local bar. He's not the only celebrity to insult the Jewish community. Filmmaker Lars von Trier, actor Mel Gibson and WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange have all been accused of varying levels of anti-Semitism. But Galliano is the only one to be prosecuted. He faces a possible jail sentence or a hefty fine when the judge gives his verdict in September. As in France, anti-Semitic and racist insults can lead to prosecution in Britain. Galliano says he couldn't remember what he said and blames drink and drugs. He's already apologised to the victims and he was sacked from his glamorous fashion job. But should his words, however insulting and hurtful, have put him in court? The law argues hate speech must be illegal because words can lead to deeds, rants can provoke violence. Even the words anti-Semitism themselves conjure up the Nazis and the horrors of the Holocaust. Anti-Semitic crimes are still shockingly frequent. Some argue, though, that accusations of racism can also be used to stifle genuine political debate. Critics of Israel say they are too quickly labelled as anti-Semitic if they criticise the Israeli state. It's not just anti-Semitism in the dock. The right-wing Dutch politician Geert Wilders was prosecuted for hate speech against the Muslim community. But the court this week ruled what he said was within the boundaries of reasonable criticism. Should we defend free speech at all costs and not use the law to punish remarks, however vile? Or would that only encourage bigotry, like some are forced to endure at football grounds around the country? So is public disapproval now enough to punish hate speech? Or should rants against religions and races put you in jail? What do you think? Should religious insults land you in court if you've got a webcam? You can make your point on the programme this morning on Skype. You can also join the conversation on Twitter, by phone, you can text us, you can email us. All the details are on screen. Um, Richard, uh, people who haven't been to football matches might be particularly shocked. Perhaps those people who go to the football matches might be shocked, particularly about those words used in that report. But should they land those chanters in court? I think there's a, a difference, and I, I didn't know about the, the, the idea of a, a train full of yobs shouting like that. I would make a, a huge difference between that and a, a, a fashion designer late at night in a bar being goaded by people uh, laughed, laughingly and then making these absurd remarks. I mean, he seems to me a completely harmless twerp, not a thug. And the idea... Yeah, and the idea... Harmless, the, to tell someone that their the, grandparents should have been gassed. The, Define harmless, the, Richard. The, the, idea, the idea that these oh, you've got idiot Richard. remarks okay. by him would, are somehow connected to unpleasantness and worse at synagogue seems to me ridiculous. Just want well, to are they, Nick? Ha harmless, then, to suggest to someone their grandparents should have been gassed. Uh, I just want to make that point. Okay, fair late, enough. Late, course, at night, late at night, oh, in a bar... Right. That Sorry. makes it all right, does it? I, I, I agree, yeah. I agree no, with Nick. I think what... <laughs> Pichoir, you, I agree with Nick. You will come to the dark side. Yes, you yes, absolutely. I, I think it's absolutely unforgivable. No matter how famous... And they didn't get up no, and no, leave. No, how much of a twerp he is, how much of a, of a nitwit he is, you can call him all kinds of, you know, try and forgive him for everything he's done but that what he said is unforgivable i think to take uh, take uh, you know make your defense out of the fact oh i was drunk i Ridiculous. didn't know what i was doing it's got to be within i was to on come drugs yeah. exactly and it's not yeah. the first time Absolutely. he's done it no, it's not. so just because he's been encouraged by others does not mean that he has a license to say what he did mark gardner Absolutely is not. from the community security trust um, which defends the jewish community from anti-semitic attacks 
Are misguided comments by a drunk celebrity uh, in a bar on the same continuum as those who chant about Auschwitz at a football match? There is obviously a difference between an individual in a bar making comments to people and a whole bunch of drunken thugs on a train who could very easily turn to violence. But I think we're missing the point here somewhat. Both acts are illegal. And if you're a victim, if you're somebody who happens to be in the bar experiencing this, especially if nobody comes to your aid, it's a serious matter. We should care more about the victim rather than the identity of the perpetrator. Forgive me, I, I, the, the, uh, the, the response to a drunk in a bar mouthing up is to get up and leave, not to stay there laughing with him. Can, can I just say one thing? Because I have been the victim of, of uh, sort of racist abuse in, in London, and this was many years ago, about 10 years ago, and I know exactly how you feel. You feel totally defenseless, and it does something to your psyche. You actually do feel like you want to go home, you don't want to stay here anymore you feel that you're somehow uh, you know in, in been made to feel ne negligible that you're inferior so as a result of which it does have a very huge effect on your mind did you bring on charges? your person you no I didn't it? because this was this was just a bunch of kids mm -hmm. on on a station on a true tube oh, station that's, that's and I didn't live again. here that's and I was I didn't again. I didn't live here I, I was actually a, just a tourist at that time I didn't live in London at that mm. time so I'm just trying to say it it so it was very harmful I didn't want to come back to the UK for many years after that because I was just too scared if, if it could just happen to me on the street you can think what it would do to anybody else well Dr know, Evan so. Harris yeah. uh, former Liberal Democrat MP free speech campaigner uh, joins us the effect of these words is very damaging on the individual so should we prosecute them in court to make sure they stop well firstly I think there's a vital distinction to be made which hasn't been made yet given you mentioned both race and religion in your introduction, between attacking a religion or indeed uh, being insulting to people on the basis of their religion, especially when you don't intend to cause them to stress and alarm, and something to do with race, because it's absolutely vital in a free society uh, that we have a full exchange of ideas about uh, religious or, or, or non-religious matters. That's, that's quasi-political. Race is somewhat different because it's your innate characteristics and therefore there are different rules but I think that criminalizing people for uh, racist outbursts when no harm is done except to themselves and their reputation uh, is flawed because it creates martyrs uh, and it, it's not a very effective way it's not going to deter people when they're when they're in Mr. Galliano's position from doing it again. So Which I'd one? be very I dubious about I completely disagree. I completely disagree. I think taking the, him to court was the right decision because what it does is it puts puts the entire debate at a different level. You know, it goes out of the uh, space of being abusive, insults being hurled at each other. You're getting into court. You're looking, you're examining the circumstances. And what it also does is put the onus on the person who was the abuser to sort of sit back and take stock of what he did. He has lost his job he Good. has lost a four million pound uh, job Good. you know which which has given him a, a, a sense of what could have been the damage done to oh, the right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. mark I uh, mark Gardner from the Community Safety Trust um, oh I'm sorry Evan is uh, Evan's trying to come back on that point and Evan will come back to you in just a moment uh, Mark Gardner from the Community Safety Trust Security Trust um, does it not actually give these remarks greater publicity I agree, but it's the media that have made it such a big deal, as indeed you're doing right now. What happened in the bar is really typical. Um, at Community Security Trust, we're a charity that cares for the victims of anti-Semitic attacks. Last year, we had over 400 reports to us from people who were subjected to anti-Semitic threats and abuse. Galliano's comments are absolutely typical. So we do hear this horrible language. On average, it happens more than once a day. Okay. It's far too often. Let's bring, but, but let's bring Evan Harris back in because, um, er, Evan, uh, I know that you wanted to make uh, your point. I've no doubt that these things happen, but I don't think we should be filling our courts on a once-a-day basis with 365 cases like this, especially when the language is not threatening and it's not intentional. And the law could can become be threatening. very broad at the moment. And John Galliano lost his job irrespective of the outcome of the court case. And you see from the case of Geert Wilders where these laws go. I don't agree with Wilders at all. I think he's 
uh, Islamophobic, and I, I don't agree with his views, and I would either ignore them or debate with them. But to make him a martyr, especially when, and same with Nick Griffin, but also Islamophobic comments, when they're not eventually mm. convicted, actually aids those people. And you see the haranguing and hounding of, of, of shock jocks like John Gaunt, I think a, a similar sort of uh, uh, a performer, professional, to Nick Ferrari, okay, who well, was pounded out. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's, not, let's not make yeah. this personal between shock jocks. Uh, Mohammed Asif uh, is a Muslim campaigner from Engage. Do you think that anti-Islamic comments should see people in court? Um, I think they should, in the sense of sending a very strong message, as we've seen in anti-Semitism, that this is not acceptable. But what we're actually seeing, and through your introduction, is that there is a disparity between the application of the law. It is illegal under the current law in terms of hate crime. And statistically, of the last year, what we've seen is a greater number of incidents relating to Muslims, and yet we don't have enforcement of the law. Uh, CST mentioned the figures of over 400. Um, their actual published figures are something like 639 incidents. Unacceptable. You look at the Muslim numbers, there are over a thousand just from two police authorities in 2010. And that is not national figures. And we're seeing a growing trend here, but the protection for the Muslim community just doesn't seem to be there. Forget court cases, just reporting and follow up and interview these things we don't feel are taking place. So what you're getting out there in the community is a sense of why even bother reporting it? Nobody's going to do anything about it. So I do think, as in this case, the media do need to pay attention, but they need to pay attention to all communities, not just anti-Semitism. That is not the only form, unfortunately, okay. of it, racist... It, 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 happened, it, it happens that some years ago, I interposed my rather bony self, as it was then, between some thugs and somebody who they were abusing mm. on, on racial grounds. Uh, because it was obviously a frightening situation. It was uh, obviously menacing. But a wrecked, off-his-face fashion designer in a bar, exploring the... Show, sure, give me a minute. Give me a, exploring I, the limits of indecency. No, he's, he's, he was exploring the limits no, of indecency. The way me. people do. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the response to that... In a public so, space. Forgive me. The response to that is to get... Up and leave him to okay. it. Um, no, Nick, but, uh, uh, yes. so I'm just going to point out, Nick, yep. you've been kind of quiet on this mm. uh, particular debate. Does it? Does if we face, if people face court for what they say, does it not make people like you tiptoe around? what you can say. No, absolutely not. Because what I do on uh, the radio station in London, LBC, is I know the, how far it can go, and I know the, where the, the legalities that I quite rightly have to observe, and there is a broadcasting agency that sits over me, and I have to be very aware. Um, Dr. Harris's point that it, it, it should all be decided on what harm is felt by the victim, how do we equate that? Has he got some magical formula? If the, the Muslim fellow was saying, if they're abused, if a Jewish guy is abused, where do they go? They're absolutely right. The people who hold banners saying that the B British ba butchers of Basra should go to hell, they should be done. People who abuse the Jews should be done. People who do the Muslim should be done. Okay. And I sincerely hope Galliano never works again. I've got a couple of emails on this. Uh, Steve from Rugby. When a public figure makes these remarks, it is totally unacceptable because of the message it delivers. And Terry from Paisley. I feel whilst we must be a tolerant society, we must not take away people's freedom of speech. This is at the heart of our democracy and you can continue that discussion online. Still to come.